Welcome everyone to Awesome Marketers event. Today we are having something special. Let me see, I'm gonna still admit the rest of our guests. Let's wait more or less till 105 to, to wait till everyone gathers. How's everyone doing today? Great. Yes. Uh, as always, I'm going to ask uh, everyone except the speakers to mute themselves because we're going to be recording the meeting. So the, the panelists, um, please, please stay with us. All right, but it's five past one. So uh, welcome everyone to our event. I see the recording already has started. Thank you very much for helping me out. And um, today we're doing something totally different. So normally we have uh, speakers and we discuss uh, different topics uh, connected to marketing, but today we decided to do a totally new format and to have a kind of a, a more practical session. Uh, we have a, a, a secret guest uh, that will be revealed shortly, who were brave enough to uh, hand over to us uh, for today uh, their marketing processes for us to look at it, check it out, give their feedback and uh, di discuss it like publicly. So I think that is really, really uh, interesting uh, experiment that we are going to do here at Awesome Marketers and uh, uh, very shortly I'm going to also uh, introduce our panelists for today. But I want to say that even though we have panelists uh, who are going to be speaking more, but uh, main uh, thing is also the, uh, that everyone is involved to, to the uh, also of course you can just watch but uh, could be great if you would be involved also. So uh, please, uh, whatever we are going to be do, you're welcome to do it with us and uh, leave your comments in the chat as we go. And then we can also uh, see the feedback from the whole community, not just the panelists. But um, yeah, let me start from introducing uh, the mysterious company. We have all, all been intrigued for a while and now, now we're going to uh, reveal it is. So uh, the, the company that we are going to uh, have today is Team Spective. Uh, welcome Piotr Machak, who is going to be uh, representing the company. And um, Team Spective is a lightweight feedback and pulse solution for organizations who want to boost their productivity and well-being. And um, Piotr, uh, maybe we're going to have the, the, intro uh, the introductions later, but ju just say a few words to our guests. Uh, hello, everyone. It's really great to be here. And thanks for giving this kind of an opportunity. Uh, we don't know how the test, how this experiment will go, but we would love to hear a lot of valuable feedback from you. So great to see you here. Yes, thank you Dr. for the introduction. We, we are really happy that you decided to go with us for, for, for this. And, uh, it, it, it's really scary. It's really scary, <laughs> but uh, yeah, as the company, our mission is to make their working life more humane and we ourselves want to be very open to feedback. So that's why, like, even though it's scary just to give out your marketing to everyone to do, discuss and decide what's good or bad, but we are ready. 
Perfect. Uh, so are we. Let's see if our panelists are ready also. I'm going to introduce uh, one by one. So I'm going to start with Simone. Uh, Simone has a master's degree in marketing and consumer behavior uh, and has been working for B2B and B2C technology companies in Brazil, Finland and Hong Kong for past eight years. She's currently based in Portugal as a marketing leader for a startup incubator, focusing mostly on B2B sales. Welcome, Simone. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. Yes, excited to have you here. Uh, next up, uh, Ilaria. Ilaria is studying digital marketing uh, at The Shortcut. She's going to be our next uh, panelist. Hi, Ilaria. Hi. Yes. Uh, next up, Yelena Bisbarodova. Um, Yelena has recently moved to Helsinki. She's also a marketer, a marketer with um, experience. Uh, she has recently launched her own uh, like sh sh short videos on, on that are telling about uh, digital marketing. Uh, really cool, uh, really cool perspective from Yelena. Hi, Yelena. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you all. Yes. Hi. And last but not least, uh, Jesse Christian, our uh, qu quite um, quite a popular uh, member of our community. And I think we, we also have one more event coming up with Jesse. Uh, Jesse is uh, a guru in contact mar content marketing, and we are glad to welcome her also. Thank you. That's so sweet. And um, yeah, apparently I, I, I come to a lot of events. So. <laughs> Make sure to also join for the AI and content marketing event. Awesome. Yes, uh, we had uh, we had to have one more expert, Grafton Robertson, but he can't participate today. So the panel will be four people, but I think we are going to do quite well. Uh, for those who don't know us, the community, the Awesome Marketers is uh, the only uh, English speaking community in Finland about marketing. We are operating mainly on Slack and we have um, quite, quite a vibrant community where we have many channels. We discuss different topics, we help people find job in marketing. And also we have this uh, Ask Us Anything service. And I think this event in a way is kind of uh, like a, uh, in, in, within, that, uh, uh, within uh, that kind of thing that we do, uh, that normally people can just pop up with their questions. And here we have like a whole event that is going to, um, to focus on that. So let, let's try this new format. And I'm happy to, uh, to give the floor to Piotr, who is going to talk about his company more in uh, detail and also uh, represent what kind of challenge we have today. Please. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, overall, like if I cover a little bit the agenda for the, uh, for the whole session, uh, the basic idea is to go through the website, like, for example, giving you all the attendees and panelists, let's say, five minutes to have a look on the website, check what kind of resources we have, see what's maybe missing, or maybe you misunderstand something. Uh, it, I have been thinking about, like, what should I uh, tell you about the company, but it kind of is the purpose of having this mysterious company case that I don't tell you much but you kind of learn yourself by visiting the website. So the general agenda would be in the beginning, checking out the website. Then after we have a short discussion, like feedback session, we try and uh, getting started with the platform itself. Uh, and as far as I remember, like half an hour before the end of the event, the last 30 minutes, we're going to have an open Q&A. So uh, Yekaterina, how do you think should we already give people some space to check the website, maybe allocate some five minutes for that? Yes, I think let's start from, from checking the website. So this is like a clean slate. You don't have to go through the whole website. We are giving you the, the address and five minutes to check and then let's see your impressions. So five minutes start now. Uh, by the way, maybe should we, should some of people share the screen and show the website, like just going through it? 
Uh, I don't know if, if anyone wants to. Uh, do I have volunteers in the panelists? Do you want to do it like online? If, if you want. No, looks like, no. Okay, maybe for do next. it, but I need to open an incognito window first. So just a second. Yeah, Simona, I'm going to, if, if you volunteer to do this, then I'm going to make you a co-host so that you can share your screen. Yes, now you're supposed to be able to share your screen. Yes, thank you. So the rest of the panelists do it on, on their own and, and the uh, auditorium do it, does it on their own also. Okay, so should I be speaking as I browse or do I have five minutes to read through? Yeah, yeah you have five minutes, yeah. Okay, okay. I just think it would be interesting to follow in some way your process of browsing the website where you uh, spend most of the time, like maybe reading some titles, reading some descriptions. So that's why it's at least to me pretty interesting to follow this screen share. Okay, yeah. it's going to be a bit unnatural because probably not how I would do normally, but yeah, let's go to that. Okay. You already got stuck, like how do I switch between the views? Okay. Two minutes to go. Is it only the homepage or do we need to go to the whole website? I think it would be more natural for you just to browse it like how you would do it. And you don't need to spend a lot of time on each of the sections. Just how would you browse the website naturally? Okay, right now I'm just trying to read everything through, but okay, I'll just go quickly as I would do normally. Okay, pricing first. This already sounds weird to me, like why would you have a solo feedback solution? Okay, what, how, how much time do we have left? It feels like it's too, too much, yes, five minutes. 15 is minutes is over, yeah, it's over time. Let's stop now. Uh, doesn't matter if you haven't had a chance to, 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 to see a lot. Uh, so now we are going to ask uh, the panelists, maybe starting from Simone, if that's okay, because she's sharing already, uh, to give like a short feedback on what they have seen, 
maybe what would they change, what they understood, what, what you haven't understood, what would you add, what would you do differently? Uh, Simona, do you feel like yeah. starting work? Yeah, or... I, I can go through. I mean, I'm not going into more details about the copy. I'll leave that, that for Jesse, <laughs> that part for Jesse. Uh, but yeah, I think like it's nice that you have immediately a way to try it. I assume you're going to have a free trial if I, yeah, it's free, try it uh, or book a demo. Yeah, nice to have the two options. I think it's clear. Uh, yeah, I think it's quite standard. Like I've also been building this kind of pages for a long time. And I think it's usually the same structure. The, heading, some information, the companies, uh, sample companies. Uh, it's good to have a lot of visuals from the tool, so I think that's quite nice. Um, yeah, like I said, here I was a bit confused how to switch between the feedback. Here, well, I think the copy here was a bit like, I was a bit confused, okay, maybe a bit too much like polished words, like brilliant feedback, but should be a bit more straightforward and not repeating too much, like the words like brilliant, brilliant. Um, and I assume that this is your target is not the employees themselves, but you're targeting the managers. So that's also my perspective for giving the feedback. I was, I will be the manager looking for this kind of feedback too. Well, for the tool itself, I also like to have some screenshots. If you're the manager that's looking for this is more like data driven, they're going to be quite like happy to see like this dashboard and stuff. So it's good to have these examples. And I think this lack of integration, I think that's probably very relevant, maybe even give more emphasis to that. But yeah, I think it's good to have it here in the homepage. Uh, and the pricing, like I said, as I was browsing, it was a bit confusing to me, like why would I even use a solo account, like if it's a feedback tool. And I think in a nutshell, that's it. Let's see the call to actions. Yeah, I didn't try to get started. Yeah, that would be the login, I guess. Yep. Yeah, I think quickly in a nutshell, that's my feedback. Uh, can I ask you, uh, and maybe this is also a good question for everyone, for all of the panelists, uh, what kind of the message or what kind of a feeling did you get from browsing the website? What does the tool do? Like just in general, uh, one, two sen sentences. It's a tool for collecting employee feedback. I also saw that there is some like things that help you to give better feedback, like what is it, a guidance for better feedback. So this also a bit, okay, where does this sit in the tool? But yeah, you know, it shows like, a, how do you collect feedback from employees so that they feel heard? Okay. Also one thing that I didn't comment and maybe this applies because I'm also, my, the product project I'm working now is very similar. It's also like human centric recruitment. So it has quite a lot to do with this. But I think like everyone is using this type of illustrations now. And when I see like a software talking about people, maybe faces could be more like engaging and more like natural if you're talking about human and people and culture. So it looks a yeah, bit like- Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay, yes. should we uh, give some- uh, Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, Peter, if you want, go ahead. But basically whoever of the panelists wants to go next, please. Feel free to unmute. Uh, maybe I can continue. Um, I have a few points that I'd like to address. Uh, yeah, regarding the copy, uh, it was already mentioned. I think, uh, yeah, some of the sentences sound a bit like maybe cliche in a way. Uh, even the, the very first sentence, build feedback culture that empowers your people. For some reason, I don't know if you guys agree or disagree, but for some reason, the word empowers kind of uh, sounds a bit vague to me in this context. So maybe the pain point of the target audience can be addressed a bit better in this main uh, copy that you use in the header. Um, also, when scrolling through the main page, uh, I understand that you wanted to mm, bring up your um, your testimonials and like to show them uh, almost at the beginning, but I feel that it's a, it'll be a little bit confusing. So you start looking through your uh, features and the description of your tool, and then suddenly there is this section with the testimonials that kind of breaks the the, the reading flow. At least that's the feeling that I got. Um, <clears throat> I also quickly check the pricing page. Uh, yeah, I think maybe just design wise, it's a little bit difficult to digest and actually to see the difference between different plans. Also, because all of the, uh, the, the text is, is too small, perhaps. 
Uh, so yeah, like I think the the difference between plants is not clear, and the benefits of of each plan maybe is not that clearly explained. Maybe some visuals would be beneficial there. I don't know. Um, and uh, my last comment would be on the resources page. Uh, yeah, I got a feeling that it's a little bit like a draft now, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah, so maybe it could have some categories or a little bit of more clarity of what is actually what what I can actually uh, see on this page. Yes, good point. Yeah, I think that's that's all that I uh, that I wanted to share. Would you be able like to give one two sentences about the message? Uh, like how how do you, what does the platform do in your opinion? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so after spending three to five minutes on your website, I got an idea that your tool helps HR managers. Uh, mainly HR managers, people, people resources managers, uh, to collect feedback and uh, to yeah to help perhaps improve your team spirit or something by collecting mm -hmm. feedback from employees. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Helena. Thank you. Great feedback. Uh, who would like to go next, Ilaria or Jesse? Uh, I can go next. So yes, I was also agreeing with uh, Simone that um, on the homepage, like the illustration was a bit like uh, bland and I would like to see more like um, I understood. So this is more like a human to human thing. So more like human faces, uh, human interacting with each other and like even videos because uh, like when I'm reading the copy, I'm not actually, I didn't understood like quite well, what does it, uh, what it's, what it's, what it's about. So it was a little bit confusing. And I think there was like a lot of, um, uh, text there, like the first to send, uh, first to, uh, like the, this built feedback culture that empowers your people. So. I'm, I, I agree that like empowers, it's, uh, I don't know, it doesn't tell me enough about the product or uh, what's the problem that is solving. So uh, it, it, it was a little bit like heavy to read all the homepage. So I would like to see more like uh, what does it solve, like more like clearly and have like more like a, like a warm brand. I think this brand, looks to me uh, quite like a little, little bit cold and like tech, 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 but I would like to see more mm. like <laughs> humans. Yeah. 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 So, and uh, one thing that I liked a lot were, were the case stories section, because there was like this people telling st stories. So I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Laria. Jesse? Yeah, I can actually build, build on that. Uh, I mean, first of all, agreed with everything that was already um, said with, I also think the first headline could be more powerful. Um, there is some things, some minor um, like copy changes that I would do. Um, Slack is very interesting, I'm sure for many companies that you can integrate it, so that's very important. Uh, but building on the case stories, to me, to be honest, it's underwhelming if I click on case stories because it's testimonials. That's what it is. It's not case stories. So um, what I would like to see on this page somewhere is some form of this is how you actually use this tool. So maybe a video, maybe an actual case study where you talk about, hey, this is how this um, company, you know, is, has, mm, like you have it, you know, mm, ah, okay, you have the, the interviews. Yeah, that should be a lot more clear or like a lot easier um, to find in some 
I'm buying into a tool. It would be great to have some form of a video, some, you know, like way to see what the tool will look like apart from just the screenshots in the beginning, um, which are really good. It's good that they are there. Um, but for me, it wouldn't be enough to say, okay, I'm going to buy this product over another product. Um, I would want to see how it actually works. Um, yeah, resources, I think you mentioned, like it could be a lot more, could be a lead magnet here also. I think that's a bit of a missed opportunity here. Um, so you have people uh, that are on the website and you get them into your email marketing if you know your email, if you do your email marketing, but you have it subscribing to your blog. So I guess you do. Um, and then of course I looked at the blog, which um, could be a lot more SEO optimized especially I think with, you know, you're working in B2B. So there might be people who just look, you know, like feedback uh, tool um, or, yeah. Um, so that's something that, that could be a lot more optimized for what people are actually looking for. Um, and, um, oh yeah, one thing that I, that really stood out for me in the copy is, and that might be because I'm not your ideal audience. So I think that's also important to keep in mind, but you're using the word pulse solution, like feedback and pulse solution um, already very early on. And for me, it's like, what is a pulse solution? What, like it doesn't, that word doesn't mean anything to me. Um, and it's mentioned a couple of times, even a headline. Um, so that might be because I'm not in HR and, you know, I'm not used to that word. So that's also something to keep in mind that I think anybody here on this panel today is not your ideal audience in that sense. Um, but we look at this from the perspective of a marketer. So it might also be beneficial to then check it with your ideal audience. Um, I, I can give a short comment on this false solution thing. And uh, I can totally agree with you that we are not explaining the Pulse Solution itself, but yeah, it's uh, all about the target audience, like HR people, <clears throat> they know that it is a basic tool to use in most of uh, developed in some way companies. So that's why we are not going too deep into explanation of Pulse Survey or Solution. It's basically like a Pulse questionnaire that you have maybe a weekly or monthly, just asking how people are doing and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, also take that, you know, everything with a grain of salt because like we are most likely not your ideal audience. So some of the copy, you know, maybe it doesn't resonate with us, but it resonates with your ideal audience. Yeah, but anyways, uh, thanks for the feedback. It's, uh, it's still very important for me to understand what kind of uh, like pain points you, you have just looking at the website. Uh, but as far as I understand, we... Uh, kind of need to move to the next part. So should we start with actually registering and landing on the platform and getting started? How does it sound? Yes, exactly. Uh, also, we are actually very good on time. So now it's half past one. We are starting with the platform itself after the first mm -hmm. uh, impressions. So now Piotr is going to show you very quickly um, the onboarding, the registering. And uh, we, we're gonna work with the platform itself now. I suggest if, if it's okay with Simone that we keep, we keep Simone sharing. Oh, we keep, sorry. Or, that's or, a, that's or, a, or does anyone else need? Yeah, I guess, uh, up to you. Uh, I, I would highly rec recommend everyone just simply registering and trying their onboarding process. It's really crucial for me to understand whether it's uh, into a, intuitive enough for you to understand where do I click and stuff. Uh, I believe personally, we have a really, really great product, but I also take the responsibility of helping new users on board and getting uh, understanding of how the platform works. So please feel free to get started and try it out by yourself. Yes, and if there are any questions on how to use the platform, uh, you can guide us through it, right? Uh, sure, but that shouldn't be the case. Like, I'm not usually sitting down with other people and telling them what to do, what to click next. Uh, but okay. definitely, uh, maybe let's have three minutes because it felt five minutes is a little bit too much. Let's have three minutes. 
Do you want me to share the screen or how do we do? If, if it's comfortable for you. Yeah, sure. By the way, there are lots of comments in the chat and I'm really happy to see people taking so much active participation uh, in this kind of uh, test event experimentation. Thanks a lot. Yes, it's true, very, uh, very lively chat today. Thank you for that. We're taking notes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm writing down all the notes here as well, even though there, there's gonna be a recording of the event, but still it's so important to keep this kind of small things on paper. Thanks a lot. Okay, I'm just confirming my mail, let me see if I can. Ah, this is why we stopped to see your screen, Simona. I'm still I was, I was going back to my mail, but let me see how do I do this. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, by the way, I... there is a possibility to sign in with Slack. So maybe that would be easier instead of confirming your email. Oh yeah, that's actually a very good feature since we are a Slack-based community. Exactly. Okay, can you see my screen now on the sign up? Yes, now we can see your screen. Oh, can you reload the page? <laughs> yes. Oh, something's weird. Oh, the, the, actually, this is a case for a lot of people. Am I right? Yeah, same for me. Oh, yeah, I can see in the chat people saying, "Oh, we we have we have done some changes today and." Uh, uh, in, uh, we were preparing for the workshop and uh, we might have <laughs> broken something. Oh, really sorry for that. Let me try to go back. Okay. Well, Let me check. Really like my... I just, because I want to see with the demo data, but I would normally just click the first one because it stands out more to me. So I'll go to that. So let's try. So I assume I cannot add these questions. Those are default questions and answers if that's what you're looking for. Yeah, but I mean, if I want to add it and change them, I cannot. No. And can I add my own questions? No. No, at this point. We're giving a little bit more, more time, yes, because we had to load again. Uh, by, by the way, there is a uh, demo page. Oh, let me check it myself. Okay, at least the link in the chat works uh, for me. How does it does it work for anyone else? The demo link. Works for me, yeah. Yeah, um, Anna is saying in the in the comments that maybe try a different browser. That could be. Do do you think this could be also helpful? Chrome is not working. That should be the main one.
in my case, is working on edge. Okay, that's surprising. Like it works for me. Uh, Simone, uh, yeah. do you think, would you like to try and open the demo link? Because it's kind of a very uh, important showcase uh, for you. What can I do now that I'm sign, signed up or do I need to log out? Uh, you, you can just copy, open the link. You just copy and paste. Uh, do you see the link in the chat? Yeah, I just trying to funny. So if I sign on in with Slack, I just don't want to you can try. Let me check with my technical department. <laughs> okay, that's really uh, sorry to, to see this kind of stuff happening. Just give me a sec. Well, this is a live event. Many things can happen. Yes. Technically, so it's okay. Yes, so Ian told me here says, uh, sorry, everyone, the issue was actually fixed during the webinar. So if you do a hard reload, you may get the fix. Shall we go with that? Yeah, because now the demo didn't get the email, I guess. It's, so it's better to sign in again, I guess. OK, uh, let, let's not spend too much time on this, but uh, at least those people who were able to sign, in, sign up, maybe there are some people who were able to check the demo. Or wh what do you think, should I, for example, show the demo uh, team from my account? Like, from, I'll just screen share. Or how, how do you feel, Ekaterina? Uh, I don't know. Let's ask our panelists, how many of the panelists were able to, to load? No, I wasn't. It would be nice if you share, Pedro. Yeah, let's maybe right. let's maybe do that. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's try. New plan. Uh, can you please allow me to share the screen? Yes, making you a co-host. Now you should be able to. Okay, I'll try and go really fast. Is it working for you? Uh, let's see. Okay. Is it working? Let me know. Yes, yes I can see. Oh. I'm pretty happy to hear that. Okay, let's uh, let's try and go really fast through the demo company. So basically, when you're registering, you you have an opportunity to check the demo company. Uh, the first thing that you arrive at is the dashboard. So you can see uh, how is the company doing across different KPIs. Uh, of course, I'm explaining in more in depth, but the usual thing that I would look at is, oh, this is pretty nice. Oh, I can maybe do something here. Uh -huh. So it goes to the team overview. That's what I can understand. Uh, the next part would be interesting to me to look at is maybe how people are actually asking for feedback and giving feedback. And I can see the results of this. So I can even go by 
individuals and see that they ask for feedback and they respond to other people. Uh, something, something, team members, nice. Maybe I could go into more details about some KPIs. So I can see the difference across different time period. Yes, so I can see how it was changing according to like, for example, compared to last six months. Maybe I can do something, for example, here. Okay, so here you can see how people, what's the percentage of people that were uh, answering the questions. And you can see that it's been improving a lot in the past, let's say, how many months. So, I don't want to go too much into details, into, uh, into explaining how it works because it is a personal experience. So let me, uh, maybe, would you like to say some other tabs, for example? Yes, I think makes sense. Yeah. With the feedback. Oh, that's the so, part that you already showed, yes. Yes, so you can see the different information about how people are engaging between each other, how they are sending feedback requests. Uh, uh, I, have, I have a question because uh, yes. I know that in many companies, it's important to collect anonymous feedback. So is that something that is also possible with your tool or you will always see the name of the people? Uh, the feedback is uh, all the time anonymous. So let's see, for example, I was given some feedback, like this is my personal feedback. And if I desire to share it with my boss, I then click the link and I send the link to uh, share the feedback. But uh, the personal feedback is always anonymous. Uh, on the other hand, you can always, let me go to the home, send praise. So you give or recognition to maybe your colleague or, uh, yeah, just saying, hey, you've done great job here. And this would be public. And uh, if you have the Team Spectre account connected to Slack, there is a special Slack praise channel and all the public feedback would be visible for everyone. Okay. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, 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 totally. And also maybe just an idea, you can bring up the topic of you know being anonymous better on your website copy somewhere if it's if it's an important factor for you because i know that uh many many potential customers would value that i'm sure okay uh, that's a pretty good point i've heard that from different customers as well uh oh, oh, yeah so let me close the screen share stop uh my question here would be since we had a little bit of a uh, unfortunate uh, onboarding happening with the demo team, but how do you feel the messaging across the platform and the message uh, from the website correlate between each other, for example? Yes, panelists, you can take turns to answer that. Yeah, um, I mean, I can maybe start. Um, one thing about the onboarding, um, I I think, yeah, Jakob pointed it out. It's not anonymous, it's private, right? That's a difference. And like for me as a user, that would be a difference because it means that, you know, the pe person can still be like, oh, Jesse said, you know, to me. And that's a very different experience than getting anonymous feedback. Um, and um, of course here in this case, you know, like the, the client and the users are different, but the client is very conscious of the user's you know, behaviors because they work in HR or they CEOs. So, you know, that aspect of, I can't really provide um, feedback to somebody without it being traceable to my name, that would bother me as a user. Um, and um, then like, for me, it's a bit unclear now, okay, how are you actually supporting this positive feedback culture? Uh, like what are ways that you are making it better to give feedback? Like if I give feedback to somebody, are you like phrase it this way or focus on the positive or, you know, like there's the, 
um, like the sandwich approach, you start with something positive, then say what you want to criticize, then end on a positive note, like mm. these kind of things. And like the the page, like the demo itself now, it's like quite clear, okay, we're collecting data here, there's like this here, but there's not a lot of like the emotional aspect of feedback culture is not in there. I don't see uh, here is where we start, <laughs> you know, like these little sometimes pages have that that you actually have like a tutorial where you know you start here and then you do this and then you do that um that would be very very helpful and answering the questions that your that your potential clients definitely have which are things like is this anonymous um how are people uh, able to give feedback um, will it keep them from giving feedback because, you know, it's always traceable to their name? Will it keep them from giving feedback because, you know, it says how much feedback they've given or how much feedback they've received? Like that's something for me that would probably keep me from using this tool as a user. Um, like I don't want that like the, oh, everybody can see. And that's also a question like, do I see this as the HR person or does everybody see this? Like, can everybody see that Jesse gave this feed, uh, gave feedback to Elena? Whatever the feedback is, right? If the feedback's private, sure. But can everybody see that I gave feedback to her? <laughs> Which feels very noisy and stuff. Like, you know, it, it, yeah. Um, those are like a couple of my comments. Um, the others, I'm sure, have, have uh, very great insights as well. Just one comment from, from me. Uh, like, just your feedback is very, very relevant, and it's very important to state clear what is anonymous, what is private, and who sees what. And uh, uh, as far as I remember correctly, and I hope I do, uh, we have different views for admins, like for HR people who are uh, taking actions and who are, uh, that are analyzing, the, for example, what is happening across teams, what is happening in the whole company. And of course, as far as I remember, users themselves, they have different level of access. So I hope that answers in some way your question. Yeah, but that would be great right if it's like on the demo somewhere, you know, if you're like, hey, this page, this is your HR view your team won't be able to see that. Just like a simple note that says that already, you know, makes it clear. Yeah, thank you. Right, thank you, Jesse. Uh, let's move on to to, uh, to next uh, panelist. And I, I'm just uh, having some feedback here that maybe we also can talk more about the marketing of the company because now we are a lot of focusing a lot on the feedback features. Let, let's, let's remember that we are doing the marketing makeover. So maybe something on that side also. So yeah, that's a good point. Whoever wants to continue. Okay. Yeah, yeah. go ahead, Elena. Yeah, uh, I have a really short note about the onboarding email that I received or the welcome email that I received. Um, I think it would be great if it had some person behind it could be, I don't know, your founder, some face behind your company, because I feel like for any welcome and board onboarding message, it's important to showcase real faces. And especially in your area of business, it's like uh, super crucial. And um, even though I find that um, the UI is pretty intuitive, perhaps you could give maybe a quick, uh, I don't know, three steps on how you can get started. Uh, or here's what you can kick it off with or something like that in uh, straight in the onboarding email so that um, before clicking this call to action, like get started, uh, a, a user is somewhat prepared for what they're going to do as soon as they land on the page. Uh, can I ask maybe everyone, uh, who of you noticed that there is on the homepage a red dot question mark and when you click it, you see the four steps how to get started. Did I notice? Okay. Nope. Okay. So I, I think we had an idea about how to get started and we added this kind of small feature, but the more I've been hearing, people don't notice it that much. So maybe having, for example, a short pop-up. Uh, yeah, maybe having a short pop-up when you actually register might help to get started with the steps in, in that form. So, uh, Yelena, thanks for, for the comment. 
I think like product tours can also be, I think some tools like Intercom, they offer this that you can add a pop-up showing all the steps that force you to go through the steps like when you log in. And I think that would be my first comment is kind of try to really push for people to do the demonstration because I knew that's why I wanted to do that populate today because I knew the biggest point would be this analytics and dashboards. And before you receive the feedback, before you receive the questionnaires, you don't see that. So if you can push people to see the demo before they start to create their own post surveys, I think that's very valuable. And for me, it was really like, okay, the button to create my own survey was much bigger than the one to populate with demo data. So we'll try to put a skip like very subtle if people really don't want to see the demo, but try to push them to see this demo data because I think that's very valuable. Um, and also that's, I would say that the main point is, is all the analytics, the dashboard that's quite interesting, quite visual. So I think you do show some of that in the landing page, but if you try to reinforce, maybe even the value proposition can be more related to that. I don't know if the dashboards and analytics, the idea is just for the HR people to get control of the progress, how things are going, or is it also for sharing with employees to have this like collective responsibility of making sure that it's improving? So if that's also a point that could also be maybe reinforced in the landing page. Um, mm -hmm. Some things I would notice in the tool, but I didn't see in the landing page a bit of the gamification, kind of like giving the praise. I don't know if you have any badges, but that could be also some system to kind of motivate people to complete the service. I don't know how the comp your clients use the service. Is it mandatory to give to complete the service? Is it mandatory to give feedback? But if you could have more like gamified steps like that, even a giving praise thing that if you receive praise, you would collect badges that your colleagues can also see that. Uh, the same for sharing. I saw that you showed that there is a way to share your feedback. That would be like if I share the feedback with my boss, he doesn't know who sent me, but I know. But maybe a use case for that, like when do you use that, like in which cases. So that could also maybe be a feature that can be quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Those are my notes. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot. Like those were a lot of notes, and uh, I will definitely re listen to them on the recording. Thank you. Yeah, if any qualification, just get back to me because I always speak quite fast. So if there's anything that was not clear, just let me know. Okay. Uh, uh, Ekaterina, there is a question from Colm. Yes. Have you checked it out? Do we want, I, I would uh, as well go to the website and kind of try to understand where where's the marketing misunderstanding, let's say. So, yeah, I suggest we maybe listen to uh, Ilaria's comment because she hasn't spoken yet on this one. And then maybe uh, think what we can do on, the, on, on that question. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to comment like, uh, okay, so from the home page, uh, I sign up to the service. Um, and maybe I haven't understood like quite well, like how is it working? But then when I, after I sign up, um, I still can't understand like uh, how does the, how does it work? So I feel like um, it, it, it would be great to have like some uh, help and also like um, I'm seeing like like from the start is like uh, like all the colors are really like white and they're like okay white and blue but white on white and uh, maybe a small text so it would be like nice to see um, more colors and more like okay how, this is how you use this uh, service or first do this and then do this and like why or something like really like motivating and then I noticed it's just a small thing but uh, yeah so I see here it's like saying like lift people up and they will elevate you too with like a maybe a little bit a strange um, like I haven't seen that kind of uh, slogan anywhere and it's really small and I think it's like a you thing to say somewhere but I don't know if it's like here a good thing to say so it's a little bit confusing like why and uh, just like also there, there are these like couple of uh, illustrations that are a bit like strange, like, uh, I don't know, I think it would be good to replace with something else with maybe like uh, human faces or human interacting with, with each other. And also I noticed there's like this ask for feedback button like couple of times. So yeah it was a little bit like confusing like the steps like uh how it, it like it it seems like uh 
we have to know already like how does it works when we sign up but i would like to like go step to step like how how does it work and why should i use this okay yeah. Yes, um, thank you so much, all the panelists, for this analysis. And uh, Piotr, if this is okay for you, I would like to suggest that Kom, who is the uh, author of the first question, now, now that we kick off with the Q&A part, he would like to join shortly and give, uh, give his, um, his point of view. Would this be okay for you, Piotr? Okay. Yes, so we invite Kom Oshar Koet, who is a very active member of our community, the person behind our YouTube channel and many, many great conversations. Kom, please take Hello. the floor. Hello, Ekaterina. Yeah, I, I actually, like, I, I contacted her separately, the awesome marketers in the chat, and asked to join in. So if anybody else wants to do that, like, feel free to go ahead. The reason I did this is I was then going to ask if I can share a screen. Um, if that's okay, Ekaterina, can I can I be a co-host for like two seconds while to share a screen? Yes, making you a co-host. One second. And I think anybody else who has like direct feedback to bring in, because you're all welcome, of course, to give direct feedback as well as the panelists. And I think Peter will be really happy with that. Um, now you should be able to share the screen. Oh, I can do all sorts of things. I have power and app. Okay, so I'll share this window I really really excuse my tabs um ignore all of that um i was not preparing to be on this so yeah yeah I, I like one of the things that hits me about this which is really interesting is um and i don't think anybody mentioned it so much but like i'm yeah everyone was talking about this like build feedback culture that empowers your team but like i I don't see a promised land there. And like, I, I think what you should really read is uh, something by Andy Raskin. And he talks about pitching the promised land. And this is like the ultimate goal of like your target audience. So what the, what the HR person or whatever wants to like really achieve with your app. And you've got, you've got hints of this throughout the website as well. Like you could, you've got some of this boosting pro productivity, well-being. Um, take actions to build build an effective work environment like that's hidden below the fold there, and um, that's like a really interesting point, um, which I I actually find more interesting up here as a top heading. Um, another thing here is like you've got this heading over your work email. Try it, try it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a repetitiveness there which uh, is really not needed. Um, like if if it's if it's a demo or or something, it's it's like you know. Um, see how it works or something like that. You don't, it doesn't need to be like, try it, add, add some more value in, in that proposition there. This is like your, your primary call to action to get them to put in their email and then they click on try it. Um, like I, I'm not explaining it very well, but that's my thing. And then one other thing above the fold is you've got this thousands of professionals and we're not like, you're not aiming at thousands of professionals. You're aiming at a very specific department in a company um that's like hr professionals um so like you've got the you've got an opportunity here to like bring in this hr thing right above the fold in your website so i i really think you should think about that um then like i'm not going to go through the entire website but one other tiny thing that hit me is like if i'm sold by this website if i'm sold by this landing page and i click on get started um the thing i see um is is really boring. It's, it's incredibly boring. Um, like you have an opportunity here to remind the person who is signing up why they're signing up. You have an opportunity here to give them the USP. You've got an opportunity here to like really like close that sale. Um, so think about how the design should work on this page as well and remind the person why they should be signing up. Um, so that's like, a, that's, a, that's a few cents for me. Um, and like, I'm sure a lot of people have other opinions, but that's like what I saw straight away when I was looking at the website and I didn't really want to type all this. I wanted to say it real quick and then like, be like, bye-bye. So yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Yes, thank you very much, Com, for joining. Actually, we lost one panelist. So you are probably the, the substitute. Oh. Okay, well, I'll I'll get out of here. Uh, you can you can throw me away now if you want. I'm I'm good. 
Yes, but uh, this uh, this brings to the conclusion the first part of the event, which was like more like with a heavy accent on the panelists' feedback. And now we are uh, switching to second part of the event, which is going to be like more relaxed, more like a Q and A session. And in this part, uh, we uh, maybe give the floor more to Peter so that he can ask his questions to the panelists, and also we give more air time to our uh, audience, they can um, uh, um, develop their comments that they have already posted in the chat or comment something new and we are going to uh, interact with that. That's the plan. Okay, can I add something because uh, of course I've been preparing different questions, but it happened to be that during the whole this first hour I've been asking some or partly the questions that I've prepared. So. Uh, maybe it would be better just for to give room to speak uh, for, for their uh, panelists and attendees and just discuss. Let, let's not go back to the uh, product area, but let's just talk about the marketing since it's a marketing uh, community. Uh, um, who wants to bring any kind of questions? Uh, yeah, I think uh, maybe more like an idea instead of question so i really feel that especially in 2021 um you, uh, your business has a lot of potential so and you have a lot of potential to reach uh, to reach your target audience with the right content so my advice would be to really um double down on your content production because um, uh, i've checked your blog and um I can see that it's like a combination of some product updates, some, I don't know, team intro. So, and you, of course you have a call to action on almost every piece that you have or on every whatever. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel like there is uh, lots of different ways how you can approach your content creation, uh, write more pieces on, on psychology, perhaps some, I don't know, templates that you can offer as lead magnets. Um, and more thorough and SEO friendly content. So, because the, the topic is so huge right now. So uh, yeah, I think you should definitely double down on your content uh, side of things. Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Like uh, I, I kind of realized the opportunity in the content creation and uh, SEO. Uh, it's, it's in the plan. Let's say it like this. It's uh, it will take some time for us to uh, find enough, uh, I would say, time, resources, and uh, expertise in actually creating that kind of uh, converting and SEO optimized content. So thanks for bringing this up. It's definitely on the on the way. Uh, should we take? Uh, sorry, anyone has any more comments or questions or something? Yes, uh, while the panelists are thinking, <laughs> let's read some <laughs> questions from the chat. Uh, let's give some rest to our panelists who have been doing a great job. Uh, so uh, Anna is asking, uh, what is your marketing strategy and acquisition channels? How do you drive traffic to the website now? And what is your main challenge? So the whole, the whole interview. Uh, yeah, it's like, it's a pretty big question, especially the first one, what's your marketing strategy? Uh, but I, will, I would say that we've tried taking the kind of growth hacking approach in some way. So we've been, we've been testing different uh, messages or different channels, let's say uh, Google Ads, uh, Facebook, uh, some, something, 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 LinkedIn as well. Uh, it's a case of a discussion. What kind of cost per leads are you actually aiming for? And I'm really happy that uh, some time ago, maybe a couple of weeks ago, uh, there was a thread that I was asking about how to drive more signups for the webinars. And I'm, I was very happy that people were so active and uh, like giving ideas, thoughts, and I had a couple of calls. Uh, so it brings to this kind of a question, what actual cost per lead are you aiming for? <clears throat> and we've still been testing and iterating this kind of stuff. Uh, so how do you drive traffic? It's 
we have not put much focus on the organic uh, traffic. I mean, SEO or, for example, guest blogs or maybe, I don't know, some PR or stuff. Uh, we've been trying to run some ads, as I've said, on different channels. And uh, of course, different channels have different results. So it's like a little bit of a bigger discussion than just to answer in a couple of sentences. Uh, but if some of you would like to uh, spar with me, maybe have a look at the, uh, I don't know, analytics, let's say, just simply go through Google Ads, I'm very welcome uh, to hear your uh, thoughts and um, maybe just let's have a call. So I'm just like saying, I'm very open to any kind of feedback if you have some. Yes, actually we had, uh, I remember that when we were discussing the event, we were thinking maybe to have even ads as part of this event, but in that case, it would go very long. So we didn't, didn't have that part, but yeah, definitely we could follow up in the community on that. Um. Yep. I don't know. It feels like it's kind of already prolonging the time. So does anyone have actual, actual questions or comments that would like to speak up or maybe add something? <laughs> now I'm, I'm seeing that there have been actually some questions along the way that I didn't address. Anna, Anna is asking, what's the best working channel? You mentioned a lot, but does anything work? Uh, I can give some rough numbers in terms of, for example, from Google Ads, we've been able to get uh, people sign up with a pretty uh, adequate costs per, per sign up, cost per clicks, but we were not able to convert those uh, users like how, how would I say, through the whole uh, buyer funnel. Uh, in terms of LinkedIn, uh, we had really, really low uh, clicks across the ads, like running different budgets, let's say 100, uh, 200 euros for different emails, uh, feed ads, video ads. So the clicks were very, very low. And uh, I, as far as I remember correctly, we didn't have, people, maybe a couple of people sign up uh, on the website and try the platform, but the comparison to Google Ads is such a big difference. There is a big difference there. So I hope I answered in some way. Ah, and Facebook, let's say, let's talk about Facebook. Uh, since it's a very mobile heavy platform, I mean, uh, mobile focused, uh, it's, pretty hard to kind of, to get users to sign up. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it was pretty hard like in terms of clicks and stuff. So I don't know, it's, it's still a very broad topic to talk about. I'm not quite sure what to, 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 to discuss here. If someone has a follow-up question. Yeah, actually we do. Um, uh, Colm is asking in the chat, what percentage of signups do you have organic direct referral versus paid? If you can share that. Uh, almost 80% uh, is organic simply because of uh, typing team perspective into Google. And uh, as well, our uh, CEO, Yako, he is actually listening right now. He is very active on LinkedIn and following up on people and just reminding them all the time that, hey, we're here and we can help you uh, build your feedback culture in your organization and stuff like that. Uh, so people are searching quite a lot for Team Spectre in Google and it's on their first line of the page in the searches. So uh, they sign up a lot, but it's really hard to connect those people who maybe saw an ad, checked the website, and then later they, uh, they found it. I, I don't know, it's really hard to connect those people. Right, um, question yeah, from Simone. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, then Simone, you go first. No, no, actually he's in the chat, so I, <laughs> but Simone. Yeah, I was just try. asking if, I could, if you're targeting some specific markets, like I noticed in, noticed in, the, way, in the product, you could switch from Swami to an English, but the website, I think it was everything in English, so are you targeting mostly Finland or is it like across? the world and also who is the target market in terms of size of company 
Is it like all companies, that's what it's like tech companies, but do they always have an HR department? Or is it like kind of more startup that they might not even have a person dedicated to HR? So you kind of need to even explain why your feedback culture is important. Or is it people that already know like this performance management tools and they know is it important? And how much do you need to educate your target customer? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. Like the ICP ideal customer profile is definitely HR people uh, in companies from let's say 30, preferably 50 people to 200, uh, preferably in software uh, industries or IT industries because people are more uh, self-oriented there or, or self, self-directed, sorry, <laughs> not self-oriented. Yeah, self-directed teams uh, in, u- in usual, I mean, in most cases, of course, there is an HR person who is uh, uh, introducing the system and introducing uh, people to this uh, concept of a feedback culture. So I hope I answered part of the question. And if we're talking about uh, specific markets right now, uh, we've been putting more pressure on Finland since we have all of the customers here in Finland. That's why it's very useful to have the product, the platform itself in Finnish and English. Uh, but I do get your point about that the website is in English. Uh, we've been trying to address uh, international markets like UK, for example, uh, and uh, US, but uh, yeah. And uh, it's it's interesting to uh, find a product market fit in these new markets uh, because we've been testing a lot of the messaging itself, like what would click. We've been iterating, creating new landing pages and stuff. So it's been an interesting, uh, how, how would I call it, adventure and still is. Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, that's such a good um, topic to also talk about is, you know, landing pages and um, how to convert ultimately because... You know, we in this group here, we're all coming from a marketing perspective, of course, but, um, you know, I also, uh, I worked in startups and I have started my own company. So um, I also understand that, of course, for Yako, it's very important. Like, where are we getting those first sales? Where are we getting those first clients? Um, And that's not always, you know, like a lot of these things that we discussed here, they are, of course, great and important to look at. Uh, but they might not always be the highest priority um, if you actually want to get sales um, because a lot of, I've never worked in B2B. um, So, you know, I'm not as experienced in that, but, you know, you need to get those first companies on board and then like you can spend a lot of time on SEO and so on and so on and so on. Um, So, yeah, I was quite curious about, you know, if you've been, um, apart from your homepage, if you've been even just using, you know, like landing pages, because I could imagine that if you connect with, like a lot of your work at the moment is through connections and networking, a lot of the sales. So then it might be really nice to have a very, very clear just landing page, which is not per se the homepage, but a landing page that converts, that has like what we mentioned earlier, like the video tutorial, these kind of things, Um, maybe even focusing more on having that one really good, because that's where a lot of sales also happen, is if you have that amazing landing page. Uh, What has been your testing with that? Uh, I've created, uh, we're using HubSpot, so I've created a couple of uh, landing pages with different approaches, like for example, focusing on feedback mostly, focusing on product features, focusing on the Slack uh, aspect approach and stuff like that. Uh, but overall, just to sum it up, we've seen that, the, uh, okay, I've seen that uh, landing pages have been performing uh, poor, poorly or worse, yes, worse compared to uh, our homepage. <laughs> uh, so yeah. This is an interesting situation that uh, we've been trying to drive traffic uh, and run ads to the landing pages, but simply the uh, signups have been much worse. The number of signups and the cost per signup has been much worse. 
So that's not, uh, that's that's why I really wanted to uh, focus a little bit on the website and improve it. And that's why I asked uh, about having this kind of a session so that we could double down on our website and make it better. And I believe with the, uh, the amount of feedback that I've received, like in this one hour and 20 minutes, we can make something really cool. Okay. Yes, it seems so. Also, uh, I'm saving all the all the comments from the chat that we can also get back to. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it feels like we have more or less uh, covered um, all the questions. How how do you panelists feel? What was it? Uh, how was your experience? It yeah, was sorry, really, just... it was really. Oh, sorry to cut you. Go ahead. <laughs> no, sorry. I just wanted to add uh, to what Petter said. Yeah, I can. I can totally imagine that actually the homepage performs better because you know maybe HR personnel they want to check all these things, right? They don't just want one page. They're like, let me check the pricing. Let me check this. Let me check. You know, like so. Um, yeah, that makes total sense. That um, you're focusing on the on the homepage at the moment. Sorry, Elena, you go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. First of all, thanks a lot for organizing this. Uh, a really nice as a trial project for this new type of events. Uh, I would say it's a little bit challenging to give uh, actually valuable feedback based on the website alone. Uh, it would be great perhaps to uh, have some other data at hand. For example, I don't know. Of course, it might most of the data could be confidential, but at least you know your customers, your target audience, some business made metrics, for example. Uh, I feel uh, that it, uh, in, in that case, we would be able to provide even more uh, meaningful advice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, like I said, I think it was a really great experience for everyone here. So thanks a lot for that. Yes, I also think that seems to work. This is a totally new uh, format for us. And even though we've had a couple of technical hiccups on the way, I still think we have been able to, to dig, dig into, into Team Sectives uh, marketing and give some good advice. Yes, um, Anna is sharing our links as always. If, if there are people here who are still for some reason for some mysterious reason not on our Slack, please join us. And if this goes well, and if we feel in the community that this is a, this is a great um, uh, format for the events, maybe we are going to have more of those. So if you want your marketing to be made over, please contact us with that also. And we are wishing all the luck to Team Spectives team we hope you are going to be able to use our feedback and please get back to the community every time you have the questions and thank you for the courage this is really really something that uh, quite 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 a courageous um, move but i think you're going to gain a lot from this also um can, can i add some final notes in some way from my side definitely yeah so uh thanks a lot for the session yes thank you uh i totally get what you mean about giving more meaningful feedback once you have data and uh, maybe something to play around with Elena. uh but since it's the first experience we did not know at all how it's gonna go what kind of questions how active people would be how much time to give people what to do at all are the questions even good or bad or is there anything that you can do with the website because we've had a lot of plans but no idea of time management so i would in any case say it was a really cool experience never mind the hiccups the technical part it's <laughs> uh as some people say shit can happen so don't worry about that i'm really uh, i i really appreciate the help the comments and I have written down most of the things and I'll be re-watching uh, the recording by myself. And by the way, I think I mentioned that as well, but if some of you feel like you would actually like to uh, dive deep in, into uh, maybe analytics, I, I don't know, just if you have some 
some interest in playing around with uh, this kind of startup companies, feel free to reach out to me and we can have maybe a coffee or meeting and like play around with numbers, look at their creatives, ads. I don't know, anything that feels like you want to uh, try out something, just ha having a, a gig on the side, feel free to reach out. And especially I've heard that people have a lot of, had a lot of comments on the copy side content area. If you feel that there is something that you can actually provide, not provide, but how they're called, uh, offer. Yeah, offer, <laughs> offer. So we can definitely cooperate or work around or just have a nice and meaningful chat. So feel free to reach out. Yes. Yes, thank you very much for the closing words and hope to see you in our next event. Next week on the 6th of May, we're going to have AI and content. And uh, I want to thank the panelists for giving the time to, to do this today. I want to thank Piotr for coming and everyone who was listening in also to be here with us and participate actively. Thank you very much. See you on Awesome Marketers. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you.